Well, I mean, uh, Atlantis was our standing set, and it was it was a place that that was large enough and interesting enough that we could explore it, you know, in itself. I mean, we still discovered things in season five that were part of the Atlantis, you know, world, mm -hmm. and and Destiny, that's the name of our ship, is going to be the same way. Hopefully, uh, it's a big, shiny, beautiful, in fact, stunningly beautiful, uh, Jules Verne esque spaceship that. Um, one of the conceits of our of our series is that the uh, the areas right around the Stargate are the only areas we can occupy right now because uh, those are the only ones that are pressurized. The, sh the ship has suffered so much damage over the years, over the millennia that it's been out there, that there's whole areas that we can't explore until we repair them. And as we go forward into the series, we're going to find, we're going to discover rooms that were there, but we just couldn't access. Very much so, uh, and but unlike Atlantis, it's not pristine; it's falling apart. And and uh, and when you when you open a you know if you go into a compartment in Atlantis, you're exposed to some nice you know sea air. If you're if you uh, if you're going to a compartment in in uh, aboard Destiny that that is screwed up or that where there's a air leaking, you get sucked out into space, which is a bigger problem. Uh, it's, that's quite early demonstrated in the, in the show. It's it's dangerous. Spaceships are dangerous places. But having said that, I mean, both Atlantis and Destiny have stargates. Well, very much so. I mean, in the third hour of, of our series, we, we don't just go uh, to a planet. We go to a desert planet, and it's a real desert. We went to White Sands, New Mexico for a whole episode. And by, you know, I think it's episode seven now, uh, we do an episode called Water, and we go to an ice planet, and we built an ice set, and uh, we're spending a fortune on visual effects to, to show men in spacesuits on an ice planet. We have told 300 plus hours of stories in things called Stargate. What we learned is that we, we need to tell them a different way now. We need to shake it up. We need to change the paradigm a little bit uh, and and create a different dynamic. Otherwise, Stargate is just another Stargate I don't think fans would, would like. I think I think we want uh, to take Stargate into, you know, into the present in terms of television. Uh, less rubber-faced English-speaking aliens not less, no rubber-faced English-speaking aliens. Uh, we want to we want to make a character drama, like a really interesting, dynamic character drama. That that is uh, what the best shows on television are right now. You're right. It was a team. There was a team, a sense of team, on SG-1 and, and Atlantis, and that that was kind of the secret of the show. We we said let's let's make it sort of like the Mercury Mercury astronaut program. You know these 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 few who go out and do this thing together, and then they can bond, and we can be along with them. We're part of the team. This is uh, because because we're on a ship, and because we're all sort of stuck together, we had to have a population. I mean, it's really an ensemble show, mm -hmm. uh, and and you couldn't just follow a handful of people. It's really quite a large group. Even our, pardon me. Even our even our group of series regulars is is much larger than than we had in, in previous series, and and there's also a population of people who are recurring characters who, who you know double that again. So there's a, a ton of folks that to touch in uh, base on, but. The, the point of, of SG of SG one and, and, and Atlantis was to tell stories out in space and yes we're still of course we're telling stories but it's much more of a character drama mm -hmm. and so you need to populate your series with rich interesting characters to interact with each other. 